Hi, Laura. Welcome to this podcast. I'm really excited to talk magnesium with you. I'm excited to talk about magnesium with you as well. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I actually wanted to start off by asking, um, when you reached out, you talked about your company. So um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you do and how did you get into the into the world of magnesium? Yes. Okay. This is anyway, kind of a, an unusual story. I actually started out as a registered nurse. I worked in the schools as a school nurse mm -hmm. and um, just one thing led to another. And my husband and I had uh, lived in the Pacific Northwest. We raised our family in Washington state and decided that we wanted to try our hand at having our own business. And so we actually moved to Missouri and um, we originally raised chickens for Tyson. So yeah. we had six large chicken barns and um, and I was worried every day because I knew that walking through pesticides and things that were required as part of that job were not good for my husband or me. And after three years, um, someone asked if they could buy our chicken houses. And so we very gratefully said, sure, we'd love to sell our chicken houses to you and started looking for a new job. And we felt that we were led to health and wisdom. The previous owner had been running the business about 20 years. And so she had an established business and and um, anyway, as we started looking at it, the more I learned about magnesium, the more I realized that magnesium is such an important building block for good health that so few of us know about. And the more I learned, the more I thought, wow, you know, through the business, we can do a lot of good for a lot of people. And so that's why I reached out to you to just kind of talk a little bit about some of the things that I've learned about magnesium and um, hopefully share some things that will um, be beneficial for the, the people in your community. Yeah, and we have, um, I'm glad for that, because while we, um, I mean, I talk about magnesium a lot, we've definitely not had a magnesium focused podcast before. So I'm excited about that. Does your company work primarily with magnesium products? It does. And and actually, the magnesium products that we specialize in are all topical magnesium products. So we'll talk a little bit today about oral magnesium products and topical magnesium products, and kind of how to how to navigate that and decide which would be best for you or your child. Got it. Okay. And that, that's, that's a really important thing to discuss. Uh, I've been actually curious about it for a while. And I'm glad I get to ask some of these questions right now. So um, where should we start? I'm trying to think. So let's, let's talk about magnesium deficiency. So I know that okay. there's a buzz that there's, you know, I mean, there's generally this understanding, at least in the functional medicine community, that mm -hmm. magnesium deficiency is rampant. Can you talk to us a little bit about how common this deficiency is and what it the, is. Yeah, what the symptoms are or what does it affect? Sure. Sure. So let me tell you a little bit about magnesium. Um, magnesium is actually found um, in groundwater and it's also found in foods that we eat and primarily in whole real foods. Um, it's high in um, things that are high in chlorophyll. So all your green vegetables, it's high in uh, nuts and beans and seeds. Um, it's, it's, you know, I think the challenge that we have is it, we used to be able to get our magnesium through our diet and through water because water would run through magnesium rich soils, pick up those minerals and then drinking the water and eating foods that had been grown in magnesium rich soils would give us the magnesium our bodies needed. Oh, I we see. find. Yeah, we find today that there has been a big shift away from whole real foods to more processed foods. And so a lot of people, um, instead of, um, you know, using the whole, you know, the vegetables and the beans and the, you know, the, the, you know, meats and whole grains and those kinds of things, a lot of people are going for the quick fix. So we run and get a burger or we'll run and get pizza or we're, you know, a lot of our calories are coming from soft drinks and those kinds of things, which are very, very low in magnesium. And so um, some estimates say that up to 75% or more of the population is actually low in magnesium. Um, and a lot, and the water too. I mean, when you think about it, how many of us actually just drink water out of the tap that's hard water anymore most of us don't because we're worried about the municipal water and um and what it might contain you know there are a lot of pharmaceuticals that end up in the water and there are contaminants that can end up in the water so a lot of us drink either filtered or purified water and often that takes the magnesium out as well that that so that's a double-edged sword so we're, uh -huh. oh I, I didn't realize that so we're actually actively I actually didn't realize that um, ground. It makes sense now that you say it, but yeah. that groundwater is rich in magnesium. Yeah, and we're actually like um, 
kind of so on one hand we're trying to purify our water on the other hand we're also losing some trace minerals that are in the water right and actually if you're not drinking them it, i think if you're aware that you do need them and you can supplement in another way it's probably still better than drinking municipal water that's unfiltered anyway but mm -hmm. you do have to be aware that that's a mineral that's really really important for the body i think that one of the buzzes about magnesium is there are four um really important uh minerals that our body needs and the other minerals that we've got we we know they're calcium potassium so sodium, and then magnesium. Those are the four critical minerals that our body needs. Um, others are considered trace min minerals because you don't need as much of them like iron and, you know, other kinds of, of minerals. You mm. need, you need some, but the really, the, those that come in large, um, large volume in our bodies are those four. Um, the so sodium, the potassium, calcium, and, um, and mag magnesium. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the other interesting thing is, is the distribution of these. So magnesium, 60% of our magnesium is found in our bones. And just under 40% is found in the intra intracellular fluid between the cells. And only about 1% is found in the bloodstream. And so this is the other challenge. A lot of times if we have a blood test and try, you know, we're trying to figure out, okay, how's my magnesium doing? Do I need to supplement or am I good? Most of the time, because the body's very careful about regulating the blood volume or your, your blood um, availability of magnesium, you will have a constant blood level, even though chronically within the cells, your cellular uh, magnesium levels are very, very low. And so we, we could be low and not even know it, even though we've gone to the doctor, we've had blood work, they say everything's great, you know, even your magnesium, everything is right where it should be. Often that's not the case because you actually have to do different kinds of tests to find out um, what your cellular magnesium levels are. Right. So can, can we come back to, so that tells us, that tells me that we're likely magnesium deficient because we're not getting the data to, I mean, like the, our lab tests aren't necessarily showing that. And on one hand, we're eating processed right. foods that's stripped out of magnesium. On the other hand, we're right. probably drinking water. And you talked about soil. So is um, are our soils also more deficient in magnesium these days? They are. And you'll yeah. find that unless a farmer is really doing um, organic farming where he's replenishing the soil and rotating crops and not doing monocrops and just planting in the same soil without replenishing magnesium, the magnesium can be quite low. And so even even crops that used to be fairly high in magnesium don't quite have as much as they used to unless the farmers are being very careful to replace that in the soils. And am I right that uh, organic farming can also do a ton of monocropping these days or is that not usual? It can. It depends okay. on the farm. Yeah. It yeah. And, and how they run things. Yeah. It depends. So on if how it's a huge things. industrial farm, it's probably likely like um, uh, that they are mono. Uh, right. Mono well, and it's interesting. Right a lot of times, well, this, the, the things that they put into the soil don't necessarily have high magnesium. And I mean, they're going to have a lot of nitrates and things that will grow green within the plants, mm -hmm. but um, but not necessarily magnesium. And so it, it really is. It's a really critical mag a mineral, both for plants and for people. I mean, it's, it's as important for plants and animals as it is for people. That's interesting. So what happens? Let's so we're so many of us are I'm, I'm I mean, we kind of know in the community that we're, many of us are magnesium deficient. Sure, what sure. happens? What do you see in? Uh, sure. Maybe let's focus so let's on let's start at the let's start at the very smallest, and then we'll move out from there. Okay. And so, when you look at magnesium, magnesium wants to be inside the cell, and so um, and so it. So as you receive magnesium, it goes inside the cell and you're familiar with your studying about the different organelles within the cell. You have mitochondria where energy are produced, right? So the, the magnesium, I don't know if you knew this, but it's needed in several different places within the mitochondria as you are producing ATP for energy. And so as you're burning those carbohydrates and you're producing ATP, you have to have um, you have to have magnesium. Um, we find that people who are under a lot of stress and who has not been under a lot of stress the last two years, we burn through more magnesium than you would be when you're not underneath a lot of stress. Um, magnesium helps every cell to function the way that it's supposed to function. And so when you look at a muscle cell, um, you know, in order for it to contract and then relax properly, it has to have magnesium. When you're looking at thyroid cells, in order for them to produce thyroid hormone, they've got to have magnesium. Mm -hmm. um, you look at, you know, 
all the cells in our body have to have, it's one of those critical minerals that we have to have in order for cells to function properly. Um, some of the things that you will notice if your magnesium is getting low is, first of all, like we were said, like we said, the body really struggles to produce energy. So you'll notice fatigue. Sometimes you'll notice discomfort in muscles. One of the big ones is muscle cramps. And so if a child, you know, if you're noticing that, you're, that your kids are waking up or they're complaining of growing pains and those kinds of things, it could be that they need more magnesium in order for everything, you know, that's growing to have those building blocks that it needs in order to grow. Right. And and a lot of, so right now, one of the big things in the fitness community is magnesium, because for those who exercise really hard, you will notice that um, if you use magnesium, muscle recovery is much more rapid. You don't have the stiffness for as long and your muscles feel strong and ready to exercise again more quickly than they would if you don't have some, you know, if you're not using magnesium. And you bring an important point because this, um, well, fatigue on one hand, so just pain can also manifest as fatigue sometimes. And, mm -hmm. and fatigue in children um, can show up as both hyperactivity and uh, attention issues, because if you're tired, what I mean, honestly, what can a child do, right? So it's, it's right. too much. everything is too much, the, the ability to process information, everything reduces. Right, right. Well, and it's really interesting because magnesium has a very, it's, it has a calming effect on the body. And so for muscles, it allows the muscles to relax. Even the brain and the nervous system, if you have adequate magnesium, the nervous system functions better and relaxes. And so you'll find that if kids are having headaches, or like you said, hyperactive behavior, even depression, magnesium can support the body to be coming back in balance, mm -hmm. so that it's, it's like you're saying, you're not overreacting because of the fatigue or because you don't have those you know that that inner ability to kind of self-regulate because you haven't got the magnesium on board yeah and one of the podcasts that I'm actually editing right now it's going to be out this week is um, by um, Dr. Amy Apigian and it's about the biology of trauma and she was talking her perspective was through trauma and she was talking about how um, trauma and uh, sustained trauma a traumatic experience causes nutrient deficiencies and she's talking about B vitamins and magnesium mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that that's kind of what you also talked into. So we're really running this vicious cycle of, <coughs> excuse me, of, you know, poor intake and then increased stress and then just kind of driving us into a corner. Right, right. Do you know, one of the things that I've noticed with the, um, you know, the, the, the ACEs, the early childhood um, adverse experiences, mm -hmm. is that as those as these minerals are decreased in the body, you notice an increase in certain tendencies. One is all, all types of mortality. So there are chances of having heart disease, chances of having cancer, chances of having um, diabetes, um, you know, all of those things are increased. It's really interesting because magnesium does actually support all of those. So I do wonder what the um, what the role of magnesium is in some of these because you are burning through magnesium so quickly when you um, are under stress. Um, right. it, it actually allows, you know, it, it helps the body to maintain better blood sugars. Uh -huh. You have more insulin resistance if your magnesium is low. Blood pressures, actually, if, if, um, if you don't have enough magnesium, your chances of high blood pressure are higher. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing that you can find in the literature is that if, um, if someone has had a lot of early childhood uh, adverse events, their chances of actually having a preterm birth and birth complications are higher. You'll find that with magnesium, it helps the uterus to just be relaxed and to allow that baby to grow rather than to you know start that pregnancy early as well so magnesium is very it's one of those foundational minerals that it's really interesting because we have so many little things that you can see that if the, if you've got a deficiency um you there it causes a whole lot of cascading health problems where if you can bring your magnesium levels up um not only do you feel better, but your body is just functioning better and your risk of having a lot of these um, chronic illnesses is, is decreased because you've got that main foundational mineral in your body. Well, then that is a great segue into how do we get magnesium into our body. Okay. There's, there's two things I wanted to talk about. I know we have sure. different types of magnesium. So we have glycinate, we have citrate, we have, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I, I, I have at least uh -huh. in my head, there's malate, there's threonate, uh, mm -hmm. what else? 
carbonate maybe oxide uh -huh. Uh -huh. so um but that also brings us to the question of oral versus topical and uh -huh. um, so uh, you can i mean wherever you want to start. <laughs> sure, sure. So let's talk about a few of these. There are a lot of different types of magnesium. And so um, so let's just start one at a time. So we've got magnesium citrate. It's magnesium that's combined with citric acid. This one is really good for constipation. And so if with ourselves or our children, we're trying to combat constipation, um, using magnesium citrate is a great way to do that. Magnesium, because it tends to pull water toward it, when you take an oral magnesium, there's always a chance of diarrhea and stomach upset mm -hmm. because it just, you know, it wants to go through the system very quickly. So regardless of the type of magnesium, there's always a chance. Yes, there's always a chance. Some tend to cause diarrhea more than others. Citrate is one that gets things going. And just like, you know, if you have a lot of vitamin C, Vitamin C can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so magnesium combined with that is going to kind of cause things to start moving. And so um, definitely if you're going to start some kind of oral magnesium, I would start slowly and then work up to a therapeutic dose just yes. to kind of see how your body handles the magnesium and see if it kind of gets things going faster than you want them to go. But, but magnesium citrate is actually, it is a very bioavailable form of magnesium. So it is a good type, but it will get you going. Um, magnesium oxide that you were talking about is not well absorbed by the body. It's not one that they really recommend that you take orally. Um, it, it's used for other things. Um, and so let's just skip over that one for right now. Um, magnesium lactate is actually bound with lactic acid. It's also a very bioavailable um, type of magnesium. It's actually a little gentler on your, on your digestive system than magnesium um, citrate. Mm -hmm. um, in the, in the literature, it shows that um, it's really good for treating stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that has to do with being bound to lactate or if it's just the properties of magnesium, because magnesium itself is really good at helping with stress and anxiety. But if that's something that you're kind of working with and you want something that's not going to necessarily cause that digestive movement, that's, is quite, right. that's a good choice. Um, so it looks like a lot of people, I mean, like when you use a magnesium compound like citrate, lactate, um, mm -hmm. we're also looking for the beneficial effects of what it's bound to sometimes. Correct. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> and so, and there's a couple of others, the, um, so the, the, the magnesium tarate, have you heard of magnesium tarate? I have, I've never used it though. Okay, so that one actually um, in the in the research, they say that it kind of promotes healthy blood sugars. And so okay. for people who are looking for that specific outcome, they can look at it. They also say that that one is good for um, for bolstering uh, heart health. And the, the reason is, is this one actually promotes um uh, a decrease in inflammation within the body. So when you're looking at inflammatory conditions that you're trying to treat with magnesium, that that's a good one. Um, tar taurine is the thing that it is actually bound to, mm -hmm. um, which is an amino acid. And so you're going to get the effect of both that amino acid and the magnesium when you take right. it. And then the last oral one that I wanted to talk about is magnesium L3 and 8. This oh. one, um, well, no, actually I've got two more. I've got the L3 and 8. This one they look at as um, it's bound with threonic acid uh -huh. and which is formed by the breakdown of vitamin C. So it's a natural compound. Um, it actually is um, in the research that they have done, they found that it's very effective on brain cells. And so if you're looking at the results of um, anxiety, depression, um, memory, um, brain function, all, all of those kinds of things, the benefits that you can receive from magnesium, um, that's, you know, that's a good oral uh, preparation that you can use if you're looking for brain health. Uh -huh. um, and then let's see the magnesium glycinate um, is one that also is great for inflammatory issues. Um, that's one that is combined with the amino acid glycine. And we all know glycine is just that's, that's a really good one for the body. You know, we want to have glycine, you know, um, especially with as much um, glyphosate as we're exposed to. It's really nice to kind of push that out with glycine. So oh, having glycine um, glycine. glyphosate issues. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to, yeah. if you <laughs> haven't had a really um, like a, uh, organic diet and you've been eating grocery store vegetables, it's a good idea to kind of get a little more glycine in your system to kind of push that out of your cells if you can. They've done some research on that one for heart disease and diabetes and that. So that one has also been um, 
really good for anti-inflammatory effects. And um, it's also good for its calming properties um, to help with anxiety, depression, insomnia, and stress. So that's another good one. And then, um, and then the last oral preparation I'm going to talk about is magnesium orotate. And um, orotate is combined with um, orotic acid. And so that's a component found in, um, in genetic material, including DNA. And this one is really, this is the one that's the most expensive because I think they're marketing to the health and fitness group that does a lot of exercise um, because they've done some studies showing that this has been really good at uh, muscle recovery and um, heart health and that kind of thing. And so that, that those, that one has been promoted that way, but I wanted to, before we leave, I want to talk about two different um, topical types of magnesium. The first one is magnesium sulfate. And we've all heard of magnesium sulfate because that's Epsom salts. Right. Right. And so, right. and so Epsom salts, you know, we know that if you soak in Epsom salts, it helps you relax and it helps you detoxify and you feel better. So Epsom salts are um, magnesium sulfate and not a lot of magnesium absorbs into the body from magnesium sulfate. And you I have to ask use- you, can you actually absorb so, well, that's two questions. Can you absorb through your skin? Is that is that a significant route of absorption? And so I find that, um, you know, it's it's hard to find good research articles um, in PubMed about topical magnesium. There have not been a lot of studies. What right. I find from talking with those who actually use it, though, uh-huh. um, that for a lot of people, absorbing through the skin is a game changer. A lot of people can't take magnesium by mouth because they've either got some kind of a digestive issue that makes digesting minerals difficult for them, or it causes such stomach upset and diarrhea that they just can't take it and yet they still need the magnesium and so with with the uh, magnesium sulfate or epsom salts you know how you have to use like a cup or even two cups Uh in the bath to have a good magnesium bath yeah well if you change to magnesium chloride which are your dead sea salts those are much more concentrated than epsom salts And they also tend to absorb into the skin a little better than the Epsom salts do. And so if you want to bring your body's magnesium levels up, the magnesium chloride seems to do better at that. And you can still Um, use them in a bath? You can put the, you can put them in a bath. So the dead sea salts you can put in a bath, or you can actually even use the liquid at the business that we purchased. um, They actually had a, a, a partnership with a company that actually provides uh, magnesium liquid, what it's called magnesium oil to pharmacies and pharmaceutical, you know, pharmaceutical places throughout the United States. And, um, and this magnesium actually is mined as a liquid and it's purified to pharmaceutical grade purity. So it's the same type of magnesium that you would find in an IV solution or an injection, very, very concentrated. So this magnesium has over 3000 milligrams of elemental magnesium per ounce. Oh, and And this is not, this is not actually an oil, but it is a topical application. It, it's not actually an oil. It's actually magnesium that is in solution. So it's in a water solution. Uh-huh. And when you apply it to the skin, um, enough of it absorbs through the skin that we notice that those who use it have big results. So people who have joint pain and want um, the effect of having inflammation relieved, they notice a big difference if they'll actually apply it to the skin. Um, and do, they, do you recommend applying it on the area that you're having an issue with or does it matter? Do you know, I think that when you apply things to the skin, the body absorbs it and a lot of it will be distributed throughout the body. Mm -hmm. But you also notice that if you apply it to a certain area, the initial effect does affect that one area. Mm -hmm. And so I've got this sweet little lady who was not able to walk up and down her stairs because she was starting to have so much low back pain and joint pain that it just made mobility really difficult for her. And she started using the magnesium products. There's a really concentrated magnesium oil and there's a less concentrated magnesium gel. And so the gel is a little more comfortable to put directly on the skin. Mm -hmm. And so she started applying this magnesium and she says, I can't believe the difference because now I can go up and down my stairs where before I was struggling. Um, you find that if you have a child that just is struggling with sleep and you have a routine of bathing every night, you can throw just one one ounce scoop of bath crystals or one ounce of magnesium oil in the bathtub. Let the child just play in the water as usual, mm-hmm. and that will absorb in. You'll notice that the child will 
calm and sleep better. I see. Um, and you'll notice, especially if you've got kids with any spasticity, you know how sometimes um, kids with special needs sometimes will have that physical involvement where their muscles are very stiff. You sure. know, you will, you will want to talk with your healthcare provider first to make sure that they're not on medications that the magnesium would adversely react with. But if they say it's okay, then you can also do a bath or topical application to help those muscles that are so tight to relax a little bit naturally because the magnesium is a natural way to help that to um the, the muscles to just relax and the the really good thing about it is magnesium because it is not an oil i i don't know how it got named magnesium oil it must have been someone felt it on their hands and they thought oh this feels like an oil and just it, it's called magnesium oil but it actually has no oil in it it's just magnesium chloride in water and um and so this type of magnesium, because it is water soluble, if you get more than your body needs, your kidneys will just filter it out. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people, you know, if you've got good kidney function, you don't need to worry. You, you can use the topical magnesium and any extra, just like if you take too much vitamin C, your body will just kind of filter out the extra. Well, it's kind of the same with magnesium. The only way you would get in trouble is if your kidney function is not good or if you're taking both the oral and the topical, sometimes you can get enough that it will cause, you know, pretty good diarrhea right, and you right. feel very like your like your muscle tone would be too loose and mm -hmm. um, just the, the other symptoms of too much magnesium. And so, and it's interesting because adult women need about 300 to 350 milligrams a day and adult men need 400 to 450 milligrams a day. Well, this type of magnesium is very concentrated with 3000 milligrams in an ounce. And I've had a lot of people ask, well, if I'm using it that concentrated, can I just put that on my skin and not worry about, you know, measuring out how much I have to put on my skin? You know, the body is very wise. And, you know, if you just put it on the skin, you'll notice most of us are so deficient that you could use a lot of magnesium for quite an extended period before your body would reach that level where you are actually at the point where you all of your magnesium levels, you know, are met and you're exceeding those. I mean, for a lot of us, it would take a lot to actually. Yeah. And I presume that's that pretty hard in the case of magnesium. And like you said, it's water soluble. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's hard to exceed what your body needs. Right, right. And most of us are under so much stress that we're burning through it as quickly as we're putting it in or putting it on. Um, yeah, but it, it really, it's got some great anti-inflammatory properties. I actually talked last week with a gal who, um, when she called in to, to get, you know, to, to do an order, she actually said, I had such severe migraine headaches that they were making a huge impact in my life and I was missing work a lot. She says, when I started using magnesium, this topical magnesium, and she says, I would just apply it to my upper back and neck and then across my forehead. And she says, when I do that every day, I don't get headaches anymore. She says, it just keeps which my body these, relaxed which one of these is uh, uh, would would they be using from your um, website laura so the different products that we have are so we've got the magnesium bath crystals mm -hmm. and the bath crystals are also they're very concentrated they're from they're directly from israel that we get those from the dead sea Mm -hmm. and um and those you would just want to follow the directions on the label and and start slowly um with with kids we've also got the magnesium oil and the magnesium gel and you can get it either with or without aloe vera magnesium mm -hmm. when it touches the skin sometimes if you're quite low it can feel very like burny or stingy on the skin Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, if they start with just the straight magnesium chloride, magnesium oil, mm -hmm. they'll feel like, oh, my body's having a funny reaction. I must not be able to use magnesium when actually the reality is um, their body is so low in magnesium that it feels strange because the body's trying to grab onto all the magnesium as quickly as it's being applied. And so what they may want to do is dilute it or use something that's less concentrated like the magnesium gel. Um, with the gel, we actually we don't use gelling agents like guar gum or, you know, other kinds of gelling agents. We actually use a natural seaweed extract, which is also full of minerals and very healthy, health promoting to the body. So it's not a thick gel. A lot of people are used to getting like grocery store aloe vera gel that comes out kind of sticky gooey. Right. Ours is very thin. It's 
it's not as thin as water, but it's very, it's quite thin. And the aloe vera sometimes, because the magnesium can be a little bit drying to the skin, we have a couple of preparations that have aloe vera in it mm -hmm. in order for, you know, for it to be comfortable on the skin and kind of not, not as drying. Um, but yeah, I mean, if people feel like they would like to try this, we would love them to come in and, and, um, and try the topical magnesium products. If, if they come in and put in the discount code mag mag for magnesium 10, they get 10% off of any product that they purchase. And we've got a couple of products. Yeah. Yeah, Mag 10. And we do have a couple of products on sale right now. We had updated our label. So we've got a few old label products that are actually even less than that. They're like 50% or less of what the retail would be if, if you would just like to try it and see how it works for you or your family at a really reasonable cost. But, um, but yeah, it's just been a really interesting ride for us. We've been doing this now about two years. I can't believe all the things that I've learned. But I, I think the thing that has impressed me most is the phone calls from people that call me and tell me, um, you know, this has made such a difference. And I think the reason it makes such a difference is so many of us need this mineral and so many of us don't understand the importance of magnesium. You know, right. we've done a great job telling people you've got to have calcium, you've got to have iron, you've got to have vitamin D, you know, all these other things that are so important for our health. But I think magnesium is just starting to come into the light as far as how badly we all need it. And I mean, it's crazy. It supports immune function um it just it, it's amazing you know and and we yeah, learned and it, 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 it also supports the absorption of many of the other nutrients that you talked about so like you know uh -huh. calcium vitamin d and magnesium are so codependent uh -huh. um, yeah well and a lot of people don't realize i mean if they are actually on calcium to help their bones to be healthier and stronger if they're not getting the magnesium that they need the, the calcium won't go into the bones and so low magnesium actually is a precursor to osteoporosis yeah totally i um yeah and this is uh thank you for sharing There's so much interesting information about the kind of the vicious cycles we're stuck in and the different forms of magnesium i'm very curious i haven't actually other than epsom salts explored topical magnesium so i am curious and not just curious i think i'm going to get the uh, get the gel and try it out because my son does struggle a lot with sleep and i'm constantly looking for sleep support of different types uh, we usually need like multiple forms of sleep support one thing never does it so this could be in his toolkit but uh, can you share as as we get ready to wrap up can you share your website and where people can find you yes so um the company name is health and wisdom and so you can find us at www.health and is the word a n d wisdom.com okay so and that is i oh yeah so health dash and dash wisdom.com right there's a dash mm -hmm. in between yeah yeah yep yeah, it yeah. will get there without the dashes, but the dashes will get it there easier too. Oh, so it will get there without the dashes? I think so. If you do health and wisdom. Health and wisdom, doing it right now, dot com. Does it make it? Yeah, it does get there without it the dashes. It does get there. Okay. Okay. So right. I think, yeah, you can do health dash and dash wisdom. And I will put the it. link on the, on the, I'm um, losing the word for it, on the show notes. And also okay. I'll, I'll include the coupon MAG10. Um, perfect that sounds so great for sharing your wisdom with us laura thank you so much for the invitation it's been a wonderful morning thank you